Welcome back. This is the MJ Show, and I have a very special guest for you today. Now, uh, I am hundred percent certain that you've seen his videos on YouTube, and you've fallen in love with the kind of music that he's produced. Uh, a couple of years ago, he mentioned that he's coming out with his new album, which he's told me is finally ready. So we've got. We've got like his entire journey to talk about the awesome songs that he's done on YouTube, of which I know so many of you are massive fans of. And of course, we're going to be talking about his new album as well. I am a huge fan of his work. I think he is incredible with what he's doing, uh, taking Indian classical music, taking Western classical music, making classical music cool and making it a lot more accessible to all of you, to all the young fans out here. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome on the show the absolutely brilliant Shankar Tucker. Good to have you on the show, man. Thank you so much. Um, well, firstly, uh, I want to say uh, it's so awesome to see that somebody uh, who sort of began his music on YouTube is now like a household name and everybody knows you. You're doing, you, you know, I know you're going to go out on tour now. You're going to be performing with your music. I hope so. And of course, all the YouTube fan fests that happen, he's been playing at, at, at them uh, in here in India. So how does it feel to uh, be what you're doing, you know, to do what you're doing right now, to be... Shankar Tucker right now and get all this, uh, <laughs> the fans and all the love that you get from YouTube. Go no, no, I mean, it's, you know, it's nothing like household name, like fame stuff. It's just, you know, and you, you know, you, you're you just being modest right now <laughs> because you know that you got a lot of fans no, out there. There are a lot of people who love your work. Yeah, um, but I mean, online anyway, it's very like removed. Like maybe you might feel that way checking comments on a YouTube video, but that's yeah. just like looking at your screen for you know, three or four minutes, you know, <laughs> once in a day. Other than that, it's just, you know, regular life. No, but it's it's really cool that, uh, you know, you've been able to use the medium, the YouTube, the digital medium in such an incredible way. I mean, okay, we'll get to the YouTube part in a little bit, like I always do with everybody who comes on the show. Let's start at the at the beginning. How did you get into music? I know this is probably a question you get asked quite a oh, lot. The name as well, Shankar Tucker. How did how did that happen? Is that the name that you're born with, or is that a? I was not born with that name. Okay. Um, so my family was, uh, they're they're followers of Mata Amrita Nanda Mai, um, okay. the lady from Kerala. She gives hugs, and yeah. um, she uh, we would go to her programs every year. She visits the states every yeah. year for a couple months, so um, we would go to her programs. And when I was about nine or ten. I, uh, it was like the cool thing to do to ask for a spiritual name. Okay. So I marched up and decided that I wanted one. And okay. uh, she gave me the name Shankar. And I've gone by it ever since, actually. Oh, wow. In the U.S. And uh, I was like fourth grade or something at the time. Yeah. I told my teacher, like, call me Shankar now. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So, that <laughs> yeah, cool. that's how that happened. And when did you get into music? Was it since your childhood? Um, yeah, I was pretty, pretty young. Um, uh, yeah, my, my family was into music, my grandfather particularly. Mm -hmm. He was a composition professor at a, wow. at a, at a university in New Jersey. Yeah. And um, he played piano and he, he taught me piano and clarinet. And then since then, I, I don't know, I, I got into it more and more as time went on. And how many instruments do you play? I mean, apart from the clarinet? Um, well, yeah, clarinet, I can play like a little bit of piano, but really when you say that you play an instrument, people expect you to actually be able to be pretty proficient on it. I mean, I can play a little bit of piano and just like I can kind of fool around on a lot of different instruments, but I wouldn't <laughs> say that I play them properly. So clarinet, I mean, it's not uh, the instrument that most kids would gravitate no. towards. Yeah. And I mean, uh, so, you'd want to, you know, you'd want to, you know, want a guitar. Or well, I wanted to play drums. saxophone is oh, what oh, happened. Okay. And um, my family convinced me otherwise, okay. saying that if I played clarinet, I could easily switch over to saxophone yeah. Not true. Uh, there's a, a significant difference between the two, but yeah. um, it was partly that they owned a clarinet and also that saxophones are like really loud and, you know, hard to listen to for yeah. beginners for yeah. like a good couple of years yeah. uh, as you're learning the instruments. Not like clarinet's that much better, but, you know, anyway, no, so that's how that happened. But yes, it has a, it, it has, it has a very beautiful mellow sound, which is uh, what people love about your music as well. I mean, the clarinet compared to a saxophone. A saxophone, yeah. like you said, can get really, really, <laughs> on, I mean, like really loud and a lot of fun. I mean, in it can yeah. be used in 
apart from using it as a jazz instrument you could use it actually in rock and roll bands and blues sure. bands and things yeah. like that yeah yeah so but uh, okay so you decided okay clarinet is the instrument that you're going to be yeah. playing and did you start learning like training of properly going to a teacher and yeah and yeah i started doing that pretty young and i was learning western classical, classical music classical. like orchestral music yeah and um, I don't know, as time went on, it just turned out to be a really good fit for what I wanted to do. I mean, I, I was really interested in jazz also. Yeah. And um, also Western classical music. And then later on with Indian music, yeah. um, clarinet just seemed to fit like right on the, on the border. Kind of, it could cross over into different genres. Lovely. Um, so yeah, it worked out. So do you remember what was probably the first song that you played on stage? I mean, to an audience uh, on, on, uh, as, a, say, as a soloist <laughs> or whatever? Because, I mean, when you start learning yeah. as a kid, you know, your parents want you to go up on stage and play something, or, you know, yeah. for, for student for recitals and student all recitals that. Student recitals and things like oh, that. Oh, man. Jeez, I don't remember at all. I remember the first, like, large performance. What do you performance? remember? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, first large performance I did was uh, the Mozart Clarinet Concerto. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah, that was, that was when I was in seventh or eighth grade, I think, something like that. Okay. Yeah, so I, I won a competition to play in front of an orchestra. Okay. So that was, like, the first time I actually was under a lot of pressure <laughs> to, to perform on stage, so yeah. Okay, so before we move ahead with the with your journey and we'll find out a little bit more, can you for, let's say, let's talk about some of the non-musical fans that you have, I mean, who love listening to it but who don't really understand the intricacies of, of the equipment, hmm. can you just briefly show your clarinet first and okay. just give them an idea of what you do, how, how, um, because you were telling me about how the sound comes out of the clarinet. So, can you yeah. just give me a brief idea, like, or maybe play a little bit and just show us something. something. Yeah. It could be a classical piece or it could be a jazz piece. I'm leaving it up to you, but okay. something, something which is not your current style of playing. <laughs> okay, well, I really hope my old teacher isn't listening right now because <laughs> this is the piece that's like deceptively simple and everybody, including me, gets torn apart uh, while studying it. So, this is. Anyway, I'll just play the first, <laughs> first line it. of it. Go for um, it. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, okay, I'll play. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's been like... Many years since I've played that. Many, many years. <laughs> you, know, you get to see something that you've not seen in oh, a long time. Anyway. But, all right. So, so this is the. So you. So you studied Western classical. Yeah. You, you know, you played jazz as well. Where did you? Where did it feel that? Okay, this is not enough. I want to learn something more. When? When did you feel that? Uh, good question. I think I felt that for like a long time, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I I was never really that satisfied with the Western classical way of operating just um, you know the way it works is you're trained to get an, a job in orchestral music yeah. and um, and you have a, you know you read off sheet music all the time yeah. and I was really into the idea of improvising yeah. and at that note I'm going to interrupt him because we're going to take a very short break okay. we're going to find out how he made that transition from western classical to Indian classical but we're going to find that out after this tiny break so don't go anywhere come back and find out more about Shankar Tucker right here on the MJ show <laughs> 